everyone, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor the Art Impressions Way. And we are still making our way through our summer release. So this week, we're gonna take on the little uh, fairy door set. Uh, I love this little set. It's super easy to do, and actually it only requires three sets of stamps. So in addition to the fairy door set, which comes with the tree, and it gives you three different doors, we're gonna do this one. Uh, we're going to need the mini flower set, so we're going to use a couple of things out of here. The little tiny dots that look like this, and these little ones that look like hearts. So we're going to use those two. And then we still need something from our foliage set, and that is the tiny grass and the vine. So just those things, and we are ready to get started with this little project. So we're going to start out by stamping the basic image, and that would be the tree. So we're going to ink that in the sepia which is the color of the outside. So we're gonna ink all of this up, the whole thing. Make sure you get enough ink on here. And we're gonna stamp that right into the center of our watercolor paper. So just like that, looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our flowers and foliage in. So you can see it kind of made this into a wisteria tree. It looks like wisteria. And it kind of adds to the whole whimsical effect of this little door. So you can make this tree whatever you want it uh, to be. I thought I would try something a little bit different in this tutorial. So it's just super easy to do. And we're gonna create that with wisteria with these little dots from the mini flower set. So what I've done, this is actually the way that they sit onto the block but I'm going to turn them so that they're up and down. So you can see the point is at the top and it kind of gets wider uh, as you go down. So actually, I think I will move this over to this side so that I can see clearly where to stamp it. Okay, so I'm going to use the purple. And I'm just gonna ink this up with the purple. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So one, two, three, four at least four times. Uh, you can go five if you want to, if you can. One, two, three, four, five, and just kind of work your way uh, up this tree. Just keep going. Just put this wherever. You know, put the light ones in the back. So even if you're going more than um, four, so four for the basic image, and then just keep going, tap in a few more in the background. You can make some a little shorter. And just kind of work your way over. And we're kind of given, you know, the impression that this is all, you know, hanging down. This tree is just full of blooms. So uh, we don't, we don't want to uh, cut it off at the top. So we're just gonna kind of give the impression that the weight of it and the, the blooms are the largest part of the tree. So we're just gonna kind of spread these out. Just tap it in. Don't stress out about this. This is just the easiest thing. There's, there's really no way to mess this up. I promise. Okay, so let's go on and we're gonna go ahead and add the foliage in now. So we're gonna do this all before we add the water. We kinda wanna blend everything together a little bit. So we're gonna take the vine now and we're just gonna ink the tip. And just kind of, you know, <clears throat> put it in randomly. I guess that's the best way to say it is to do it randomly. Uh, just turn your paper if that's easier for you. Uh, it is for me when I'm doing these things, it's just easier to stamp it right side up. So it's easier to just turn the paper and just kind of randomly put this in here. You know, when you're doing these trees, you know, these big wisteria trees, they're mostly blooms. So there's not a ton of foliage in here. So we don't need to make that our focus. Just tap it in, just keep working your way around. You can always uh, come back and add more. So um, if you find that your tree is looking a little sparse and you wanna add a little more green to it, uh, you can always do that after. Okay, so let's go ahead. Actually, I'm gonna add, um, I kinda didn't add any flowers into the middle part of this tree. And I'm gonna do that. So it looks like it's really hanging over the front as well. 
Okay, so let's get started now with this tree. So I'm going to uh, pull the color out of the tree trunk. I'm gonna kind of start with that. And especially more towards the bottom of the tree. And just drag this color uh, out. You know, these, these roots that are coming out of the bottom, there's going to be a highlight on top. So you wanna make sure that you concentrate the color on the bottom. Uh, it's all about making these things look three-dimensional. So in between where these flowers and where the foliage is, uh, just, just pull that color out. So you can still see the branches through all of this foliage and blooms. And we're going to create this little whimsical tree that will go perfect with our little fairy door. So I'm going to make my way onto the foliage now. Just kind of work your way around, do the green first, and then go back and do the purple. Just take your time. I always try to go fast on these tutorials because I feel like my attention span is about 15 minutes, and so I'm sure yours is very close to that. So I always want to try to get these projects done, you know, quickly, but you know, you can take your time. This is supposed to be relaxing and fun. And you know, these little whimsical ones are especially fun, I think. When I was a little girl, we had a big, a huge gnarly tree in our backyard and it had a really funny scar on the back. And I don't know if it was because the limb was cut off or maybe the root grew that way, but it looked just like a fairy door. And I was just really little and I love that tree and that door and I can still see it in my mind today. And that's probably what inspired this set uh, is that little fairy door. And I love playing outside and I used to create all these stories in my mind about the fairy family who lived in that tree. And of course I never could open the door, but I just imagined what was behind that little door. And that's been, well, I hate to even say it, but well over 50 years ago. Okay, so you can see that I have kind of worked my way through this tree. And I'm going to add a little more color in here now. So I've I've kind of uh, blended out all of the purple and the green, but I'm gonna add uh, another color of green in here. So this is the number 15. So I used the number 72 on the blue, on the, uh, the leaves when I put those in, but I'm going to add a little more green now in here, the number 15. And you can kind of see in between these branches, um, that's where to really put this green because you wanna kind of darken that space in, in behind. Again, it's about bringing things forward and making things look three-dimensional. That's that's really what we're trying to do here. And any way that we can create that effect or give that idea, um, that's what we want to do. Okay, so we've got our blooms in here. We've got our uh, little tree. Looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and add the door in here and I'm going to uh, use my positioner because of course I want to make sure that I get it into the right place. So I'll place my little shield into the corner like that and I'm going to ink this with the uh, sepia. No surprise there. Little wooden door and little overhang. It's gonna be inked in sepia. So I'm gonna stamp that into the corner and now I can move that and place that exactly where I want it. And I think that is a great spot right there. And all of these little doors work the same way. So just ink them in sepia and place them into your tree. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the fine tip of my sepia and you see this, this little line right here? It, it ends because the, the little doors fit into the middle. So I'm gonna bring that down, continue that little line down uh, just in here. And actually you can do this. You can add more lines in here and create more texture in this tree. It's really gonna add. You know, Don't be afraid to do stuff like that. It also will build your confidence, I promise. Okay, so now we're gonna take some of this color out of the lines. So we're gonna pull this color out, so just like this. Drag this color out, pull it out of the 
um, out of the roof. And you know, along here, you know, this, this color, this sets this little door back. So when you pull this color out from underneath, you can see how that just pulls that door back into the tree. So we're gonna make that even darker here. We're gonna really darken this little, this line back in here, and especially under here. And then just drag this color down because we want this to look like it's in the shadow underneath. Okay, so I'm going to take the fine tip now of my number 29. This is number 29 Prussian Blue. I'm gonna really darken this little, this little window. Again, we're, we're trying to make this look three-dimensional and kind of set it back into the tree. This now is sepia, and I'm just going to color this little door handle. Leave a little highlight on there. That's important. And then let's add some color now to that door. So I'm gonna use the Prussian Blue and put it on my palette. and take a really small amount of this color and just brush it on. And then let's add a little bit to this overhang as well. And as soon as that's, that's dry, you can go back in here again and really darken this this area underneath. And we can uh, add a little detail to it as well. So this is a lighter blue. So this is number 17 steel blue. And we can kind of make a little decorative element here with that. I'm adding a little sepia now to my palette. And so I'm gonna add some color now to this little roof. Leave that little highlight on the top. And then this on the side, that's gonna be really dark. And you can do the same here now with this one. We can, we can make this really rustic. Add some detail in here like this. And all these little steps, you know, it's all part of making this look more realistic. So it doesn't look like a coloring book. Looks like a little painting. So let's go ahead and pull the color now out of the lines of these little stones. They're really tiny, so there's not a lot you have to do with that. Okay, so let's take some of this Prussian blue and we're gonna, we're gonna brush in some sky, so very lightly. And we're gonna concentrate the sky to the bottom of the tree. And the reason we do that is because we don't wanna cut the tree off and you know make it um, a specific size. We wanna kinda of leave that open that the tree just keeps going. So if we were to, if you imagine we were to add blue in here to the top of this tree, you can see that that would, um, that would shape the tree. That would make the tree this exact shape because that means it ends up here. So when we leave that open and we just kind of fade it out, the tree can just keep going. The same with the sides. We don't want to bring that color over to the sides either. So it's all about um, making things appear a certain way or giving the idea of things. And sometimes the little tricks, you know, they really, um, these little simple, easy things, really make a difference. And they can kind of convey this idea um, without really thinking about it. So just really fade this out on the top. Just really, really blend that out. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead to the next step and that's to add our grasses in. So we're gonna do this with uh, the number 15, you can use whatever green you want though. Remember when you're stamping grass, you're walking it. One, two, three, four, five. And then over here, one, two, three, four, five. And let's put some back in here. You can go any direction with this grass when you walk it like that, any direction. So let's add our water to it. Pull that color up and out. Remember that. 
That's the way to make it look natural. Don't be afraid to add more color in here, you know, from your palette. Back in here like that. That looks good. So let's add some little flowers back in the background now. So we're gonna use these tiny little ones that look like little tiny hearts. And I'm using a number 89 Prussian, or uh, excuse me, not Prussian, persimmon. Oops. And just ink that up. And you're gonna tap this in here just a few times. These little tiny hearts are just, they just work perfect. So there's just tiny little blooms in the background. We can put a few right in here as well. And then dip your brush, pinch it off, and just touch all these little areas. So easy. So cute. And if you want to, take your fine tip, so of your green, either one of your greens, and if you want to make some more detail in here, pull down these little stems. You can do that or not. It's a, totally up to you. But it does kind of change the look of these little blooms a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna go back in now with just a few more of these of this wisteria. So now that this is all dried up here, I'm gonna come back in with a few darker ones. I really, really like the idea of this tree being mostly blooms. Add some water to it. And you can see those dark ones really, really uh, come out. So fun, so easy. And we are about finished with this project now. So one thing left to do, and that is to sign and date, of course. And put it on a card or put it in a frame and give it to someone that you care about. You will make their day. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you all next week.